Hi everybody and welcome to Moscow City and welcome to a new video. I'm traveling with Russell and today I thought I'd take you on a historic metro train journey from here in Moscow City to Vnukovo Airport. This is the first metro line to reach an airport in all of Russia and it just opened and I'll take you for that ride to check it out. In all of the days of the week that I've chosen to come to Moscow City and it's raining. No blue skies today. The clouds are slowly moving in on the city. It was planned to rain this afternoon. So I'm just catching it a little bit. Now I'm gonna take you on a short journey from here to the metro station. And we're gonna get on the train and head to Vnukovo Airport. I do have one trivia question for everybody. Why are a lot of the buildings in Russia only nine stories? Now, of course, there's lots of different heights of buildings, but there is a lot of them in Russia that only ended up at nine stories. Let me know in the comments if you know the answer to this trivia question. I'm actually gonna start walking from the opposite side of the river. And literally as I walk in, there's already a mention of the metro. We're gonna be taking the yellow line right there, Delavoit Center. I'm actually only gonna officially start the video at the station where the train leaves from. So we're gonna cross the bridge here, walk through Moscow City and get to the entrance of the metro. Do have to warn everybody that this video might be a little bit long. Probably already you can see from the timer how long it is. I know my videos tend to be long, but this might be a little bit longer. I really wanna focus on the two main stations that were added to this line, and particularly the last station, which ends up at the airport. The bridge we're actually walking over is called Bagatron Bridge, and it's gonna lead us over to Moscow City, where I started the video, probably the best view of the city you can get, uh, bar none, right when you're under the buildings, it's not the same as coming on the other side of the embankment. This bridge is really interesting. It's got little shops, it's got lots of cafes, and at different points you can actually look out the windows and enjoy the view. Today, of course, with a bit of rain, it's not so enjoyable. It's not the best weather outside today, but right before you walk out to the street, there's actually an ice cream stand right here. And they're only 35 rubles or 35 cents for an ice cream. And you're in a big city, you'd think the ice creams would be more, but no, 35 rubles. Have a look at this statue right here. I'm not too sure what it resembles. It's a whole lot of steel, it looks like to me. If anyone knows, you can let me know what it's meant to be. The one good thing with coming to this station is it's all indoors or underground. And also all the signage is in Russian and English. So we just need to go down another escalator cross the main road and get inside the shopping center. And then coming down underground for a brief minute or two, we come through this newly modeled section as we enter the shopping center. And the one thing I just noticed right here is a Russian Papa John's. And how neat is that in Russian Cyrillic? Well, there is not a single person in here. It's pretty interesting. They've got the pizza boards there with the different flags on and the cafe right here. I wonder if people just don't like Papa John's in Moscow. Delavoye Center Metro Station is also probably one of the bigger metro stations in the whole network in Moscow. And they even have the recruitment center here. So if you've got any aspirations to be a train driver, you can come to the recruitment center and sign yourself up. It's also very easy to get lost in this station as well. There is a few different lines that dissect into this Moscow city location. And you don't see it very often, but there's a mezzanine level and you can see down to the track where everybody's waiting for one of the trains. This is actually the blue line. It's not the one that I'm going to be taking. But it's a pretty neat view, which is very rare in all of the Moscow Metro to have this huge upstairs and then downstairs area 
being such a historic day, I thought I'd also just take you for a brief few minutes look around the museum, which is right here in the metro station. They've got a very cool museum. This could be an entire video, but I'm just going to walk in and show a couple of things. If you're a train buff or you're into metro trains or underground trains, this museum is completely free to come to. It has a lot of the memorabilia of the metro lines running through Moscow and lots of pieces of equipment from the trains and even a lot of the uniforms. They've also got one of the mimic boards right here. I think they're called mimic panels where it shows you the connection of the trains on the line. This is very interesting. This is some of the metro cards or what's now called troika cards which were and still are used as the form of payment on the metro lines and some of the older cards and then over the years they've also released a lot of limited edition ones they come they become very collectible every year and they even have here the card readers that they use when you're doing the payment as well so I could spend a lot of hours in this museum, but I'll just show you one last bit. There's actually a real metro car here. Of course, it's been cut open to show some of the workings of it. You can actually sit in the cab and play with some of the buttons. And, and then there's also a simulator where they've got some volunteers and one of the trainers here that shows you how you can actually drive the metros the kids take turns and they teach you how to drive with it raining outside still i thought i'd come to the middle of afia mall and we can see the buildings right here in this big atrium and all of the skyscrapers that wrap around afia mall and this place isn't small either this shopping center is four levels above ground and then two levels underground which then will lead down to the metro but this shopping center is big in itself and this is right in the center of Moscow right where all of the big buildings are that we saw right at the beginning of the video and it's a pretty impressive shopping mall just with the sheer size of it one of the things that's important when you come to Afia Mall is to know which entrance and exit to use because there's that many of them. Because it's geographically right in the center of all the buildings, it's got a lot of exits and a lot of escalators going down underground to the metro. So it's super important to know which is the right one. If you want to know how complicated the area is around all of the skyscrapers where we were right here the shopping center and then all the buildings that wrap around it and all we're really bothered about is finding 8a the yellow line which is right behind me for me to ride the metro today i'm going to use my troika card which is a card you can load payment on and it gives you reduced fares you can also buy a one-time card at one of the booths and I'm going to use my Troika tap the card we've got the green signal and we're going to head on inside so no more than a few minutes from the shopping center and the very center of Moscow City we come down to yellow line 8A and the one that's going to take us to the airport you just have to wait for the next metro to arrive I think I can hear it coming! Yes! Right here! Wow, check that out! And I look like I'm the only one on the platform! Let's walk on inside and there is a few people, but not too many. But maybe they're going to the same place I am, maybe they're going somewhere else. But we're going to relax and enjoy the journey to Vanukova Airport. And you can see here the different stations for the yellow line. We're at one end, Delavoid Center, and we need Airport Vonukova, which is the last station at the end. The two stations we're really gonna show 
are the ones right here. These were the newest ones that opened literally in the last day or so. So we're gonna go have a look at both of them in a little bit more detail. This is the more detailed map of the Metro and they don't actually have the new updated one on the train. They've got only till Razkazovka, which is the existing last station. And then the two extra ones are not there. Where are they? It's really very rare when you're on the Metro and there's so few people in the cars like this, but this is the first station at one end of the line. So gradually as we go along, more people will get on. And also it's the middle of the day as well on a working day. So everybody's in those towers at work. And later on, they'll be catching the train home. I thought I'd get off at Raskazovka, which is one station before the new extension and show you something that's kind of unique. You can see we've just got the two brand new stations to go and this sign would have been put up very recently. And this is Raskazovka. Now, as the metro pulls up on the other side, it obviously gets a little bit more noisy. They have some pretty interesting uh, pictures on the wall of the station. Most stations don't have too much in the way of decoration on the walls, but it has a reference to books and different novels. Now, what's interesting is on the pillars here in the middle of the track or the middle of the station or platform, they've got these, what looks like uh, drawers or cupboards that would have books in there or documents. And they've also got QR codes as the train leaves the station one more time. And if you scan the QR codes, it takes you to a downloadable book that you can read. So if you came to this station in the morning, for instance, you can download one of these novels. I don't know how you get to the ones up the top, but it takes you to a website and it's an ebook, exactly what the different titles say. Let's see if we can catch both trains in the same shot. We can. How's that for timing? And I think this is the train we need to get on to go to the last stations or the new stations. I think the sound drowns out a little bit, but let's jump on. Welcome everybody to Pictano Station. I'm pretty sure I'll have not described it properly, but have a look at all the green around where the station is. Of course, this is the station prior to the airport. There is a small micro district right in front of us right here. So all these people right here will be so happy that this opened walking distance from their house. When you go back at the map, look how green it is as another train leaves the station. Of course, this station won't be very popular in terms of people because there's not a large population of people living nearby it. But uh, it's very nice that if you had a house or an apartment or a dacha nearby, that you can now just literally walk to a metro and be in the center of Moscow in 35 minutes. Now, there is more people here than me, but it does feel very echoey in here. And of course, they're still doing some work, I would imagine. You can see the floor is a little bit dusty with this lady right here. She's picking up every little scrap that she can find. And look at these big lights here. They're meant to resemble aeroplane turbines. I think they look pretty close to it. Obviously, they're much bigger, but it's a good representation of it. As another train pulls up, looks like there's a school group coming through and they're having an excursion to go and see the new stations. And the kids and parents look like they're having a nice time. And the teachers are very keen on this to show the new uh, 
train lines and new buildings and new parks when they open. And it's really a very nice station. It's very open. The one thing which is a little bit rare with metro stations, of course, this is above ground and it's got windows right here. Probably not the best view right now because they've not finished all of the groundwork outside. You can see the forest off in the distance there and the greenery. Just imagine your house was right across the street and instantly you've got transport. Have a look at these big lights again. This is one of the main features of this station. A lot of the stations as they design them, they have some kind of a concept that they'll follow or a, a design plan to show uh, you know, maybe the region or the area where the station is, or maybe the architect of the station. One more train leaving, and as it gets a little bit quieter, the one thing I want to point out is on this opposite wall, they've got all the different airplane models and the year that they were uh, introduced. So they're like schematics of the different uh, aeroplanes. And they run the whole length of this left-hand side. The one thing that's difficult to do when you're making a video in the Metro is how frequent they run. Now, in peak times, the Metro runs every 90 seconds. And it's nearly impossible to do a cutaway and filming because the trains keep coming to the station. It's not a worry for me. I've been on the Metro a lot of times. Have a look at these different models of the planes. Now, if you're a plane buff, this would be pretty neat to see. And maybe reminisce on some of the history of the uh, airplane industry in Russia. I've even put up a information board about the different models of airplane that's on the side walls of the tracks. So each of the models and just a little information about them, which is pretty neat. This area where the airport is has a big uh, role to play in a lot of these airplane designs and manufacturing. Uh, they're all the way down this one side of the track. And then like we saw a little bit earlier there, the windows looking out to the street. The most interesting feature I think of this station by a long way is this ceiling and roof structure. And actually just even the curves and the lights that they put in. But there's a model aeroplane or a very large aeroplane mounted up on the ceiling. And from here it looks very small. Hopefully it'll get a little bit bigger as I head up to the top. But this is pretty neat. It's the replica of one of the Tupolev aeroplanes from a few years ago. From the top of the escalators, it does look a little bit bigger, but it's pretty cool to see this. And, you know, to, for the designers of these stations to try to be creative with the look of the stations, of course, it's very easy to make them look modern and new and, you know, metal and steel. But for them to come up with extra pieces of uh, design and sculptures, and that's a pretty neat roof and light space. Well, I think so anyway. I hope you agree. How many people have got an aeroplane in their train station where you live around the world? I thought I'd have a quick look outside Pictino Station. And again, you can see all this greenery around and one of the highways that passes by and then the micro district right in front of us here. And since I started filming earlier on, it's 
cleared up now and the sun's come out. How nice is it? Imagine all the people until two days ago, this wasn't open. And they've now got instant transport. Of course, they'd have all caught buses into Moscow from the main road. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people drive as well, but this micro district has seen an instant boost to their public transportation. Now the sun is right behind the station entrance here, so it's a little bit bright compared to earlier when it was raining. <laughs> and there is only one entrance to this station. Most metro stations will have an exit at both ends of the platform, but obviously with the fact that there's no other infrastructure nearby, this one exit was put in Maybe in the future they'll put more. They always tend to future-proof a lot of the designs of the stations so it allows for expansion later. It's always interesting when you come to new stations like this and wonder what everybody did two days ago about how to get to work or to school or wherever people are going. And of course, walking out here, barring the houses right here, there's nothing much around so I would have to imagine most people live right nearby. Uh, there is forest and more forest on the opposite side of the highway. As I walk back in the station, you get that new car smell. Well, perhaps it's a new metro station smell and all of the infrastructure, of course, is brand new. But you've got that smell. You know when you get in a new car and you can smell the uh, fabric and the plastic? And that's exactly what happens here. And these are the entrances to go in. We've also got a ticket booth over here. And most of the time people are using the self-service ones right in front of me. They've also got ATM machine, coffee machine. There's also chargers if you need an extra charger for your phone. And then the map if you're still lost. The one thing that they've got on the Moscow Metro as well is face pay. So you can link your bank information to an application and then you can walk up to the gate and it scans your face from these cameras right here and it opens the gate and then it debits your card for the fee. The one thing that is interesting, and this isn't normal in most of the Moscow Metro, is the signage at the new station here is in Russian Cyrillic. And very typically they have it in Russian and English. So I'm not sure why it's only in Russian. As I head back down to the platform, we can get one more look at the aeroplane. Man, that looks cool. But I like trains, I like planes, I like big trucks, so I'm easily impressed. This entrance as well, down to the platform is pretty neat. It's a little bit uh, interesting to your eyes at the same time. So as you can see from here, there is one more station to get to the airport and then all the stations going back to Moscow City in the other direction. As the advertisement shows the information about Moscow City Day coming up, there is an interesting company that runs this video advertising, Russ. Now I secretly don't own this unfortunately, but Thought it was pretty neat. There's the electric river tram that I was on. I really do wonder why the signage is in Russian. And you can let me know why that is. I'm very curious. These are the different street names and areas right here where you get out of the metro station. And always they're in English and Russian, but at this station they're not.
as we make the last stretch of the journey to the airport we're actually going over a bridge and there's actually a river right below us right now that's why you can actually see light coming through the actual train briefly goes above ground for about 450 meters and you can see the light streaming through now as we go over this bridge we're making a slight turn with the train and then we're going to go back into the tunnel to come out at the airport you don't actually see many bridges on the Moscow Metro there's only 14 of them in total and just like that we're here at airport Vanukova station now the one thing that's interesting is it's not Vanukova airport station it's airport Vanukova in reverse so this is the last stop so the actual train will stay here and go back in reverse from this point there is one very interesting feature of this station if you're to ride the metro train back to Moscow because this is the last station the way they've currently got it designed you can get on the train on either side of the platform now very typically on all of the Moscow Metro you take the train in one direction on one side and one direction in the other side and there'd be a turnaround so the train would keep going empty and then turn around and come back but you can actually get on the train on either side of the platform here and this is very unique the walls at this station aren't as uh, interesting as the last one I think the idea is you get off the train and get yourself in the airport and not maybe spend too much time looking at the architecture there's a lot of different lines and shapes to the ceiling as the train is about to head off now the metal art that they've done on the ceiling here is meant to resemble panels of aeroplanes and the different structure of the aeroplane and that's why it's all in what looks like triangles or the wing of an aeroplane and that's the design feature that they put in place I think it's noticeable maybe just here where you can see what would be the tail of the aeroplane let me know if you can see the same thing I'm seeing as we walk further along the tracks there is a little bit more of a feature here in the ceiling panels and lots of different schematics of aeroplanes which is pretty cool I mean this is something that I really came to see and to make the video about and for everybody to be wowed by I'm not at a supermarket today I've come to check out metro stations have a look at all the planes I wonder if anyone can recognize which models of planes they are from seeing this on the panels right here now I'm not sure who is who but these are the Tupolev brothers and there is uh, on one side Andrei and the other side Alexei now if anyone knows which one is which who's on the left and who's on the right maybe they were determined by the different glasses but this is the whole design of this airport station and the airline industry here in Russia I wonder how many people do get confused by this when they come down the escalator and see the arrow in both directions for all of the stations so literally any train that comes on the left or right naturally will take you back towards Moscow so it doesn't matter which side you board on because this is the last station you can then head back to Moscow from here these are pretty neat pictures of these guys again at the area where is Vanukova airport there was a design center for the Tupolev airplanes and this is created in their honor as the driver ends his uh, route right here at the Vanukova stop he actually then makes his way back down to the opposite end to drive the train away from the station 
and it's interesting now. Two days since this opened, all the people that are coming to the airport, perhaps flying in or out, and how many people perhaps live nearby. There is another uh, housing micro district here as well where people live. So perhaps, again, they've got fortunate that the metro station opened and they can walk home from here. From the metro station platform, we head up one lot of escalators and where we almost at the terminal entrance. It's very interesting how far it is from getting off the train to getting to the actual entrance of the airport. And there's a lot of infrastructure that they built for this. All of the offices and ticket booths. Wow. Now I've come to this airport quite a lot and for the last couple of years, literally they've been building this and constructing all the infrastructure around the starting of the metro station here. So it's pretty cool to see it all finished and open. I do have one interesting question for everybody. So this station has been open two entire days. And tell me, how is it possible that there's a Coca-Cola vending machine right here two days after it opened and on the bottom right hand side you can get a bottle of coca-cola in russia how is that possible this is a brand new station and they've also got a pancake vending machine i'd love to give that a try walking out from the metro you can now see where the older part of the aero express station used to be so you can now walk this way to go to the Vanukova micro district area where people live. And then you can walk through this tunnel and roughly three minutes from here, you'll be at the floor where is the check-in for the airport. So I thought I'd take you for that little bit of a walk and we can have a look on the way, what it feels like and how it is. The one thing that's interesting with the signage is it's in Russian, English, and Chinese. That's interesting. Now, I don't believe there's actually even a flight to China from this particular airport, but how interesting is that? Chinese signs on the ceiling. Originally, when you arrived to the airport, they had the Aero Express trains. So these are the ticket machines, and then you'd actually walk through this entrance here. And then you can get the suburban train from the airport and it goes to Kiev railway station. And then you can get on the Metro and connect to other parts of Moscow. One of the problems with the Aero Express train is it only ran once per hour. So there was a lot less availability of trains. And then you still weren't at your next destination. So I can see now how convenient this Metro is gonna be. Looks like we're heading in the right direction. Just have to follow this lower ground floor entrance. And one of the nice things is you've actually got a security checkpoint here to get into the terminal. The only thing is, depending on what time of day you come, this is actually a very small security checkpoint. And there is only two security checkpoints. So the line can build up pretty quickly, really uh, for no reason. Let's hope they actually expand this, realizing that more and more people are gonna be arriving by metro to the airport. After a short wait to go through the security checkpoint, now I'm in the airport proper. And the one thing with going through the security point there, you're not doing it up at the boarding gates, which is a nice thing, but when the metro gets a little bit busier, of course that line is gonna get longer as well. And it's not any more helpful. Arrivals and departures, straight ahead. One more escalator and I think we're there. It's really not that far from getting off the train to getting through the underpass and then here to the boarding gates uh, and the, where you check your luggage 
It may look like it on the video a little bit further, but it's really not that far. Stepping off the escalator, here we are at Vanukova Airport. And there's the arrival and departure board right there. And then what seems like never ending check-in counters that wrap all the way around this level of the airport. Of course, I'm not going anywhere, but this video is uh, arriving, intended to be me getting here to the airport. This is the more famous flight board here at the airport with the departures from the airport here. Going from right now, roughly six o'clock, right through to three o'clock in the morning. They don't stop this air, uh, flights leaving out of this airport. It's round the clock, literally. And there's lots of people around, but there is a lot of check-in counters here, so it may not look busy where I'm standing, but it goes all the way through to the back. Okay, everybody, we've come to the end of the video. Of course, we started way back at Moscow City and Delavoye Center Metro Station. Now, the trip to get from Delavoye Center to Airport Vnukovo Metro Station took 40 minutes. Of course, the train stops at all of the 14 stations, I think it was. And then the walk from the platform off the Metro to get to the checking counters here takes, I would say about seven to 10 minutes maybe a few minutes going through that security checkpoint. So very convenient. Of course, not everyone's gonna take the Metro starting from the Moscow city area where I was. Everyone will come from other lines and then connect into the yellow line that we ended on. So that may extend how long it takes to get here. But what's just amazing when you think about it, this is the first and only airport in Russia with a Metro connected directly to it and you can get from any point in Moscow and Moscow region on the metro and literally you're getting off the metro train coming up a few escalators and you're here at the airport that's what's really hard for me to actually understand I know this airport very well I literally live 12 or 14 minutes by car from here so this is literally where I am in Moscow region so it's just hard to fathom and just the convenience for everybody to get here now be able to get on the metro which is a normal part of people's transport in Moscow and then end here at the airport is just fantastic. I really hope you like this video. If you did give it a thumbs up. If you've made it to the end double thumbs up. Really I think this is going to be a long video. I hope not but I think these transport videos it deserves a longer video so I hope you've enjoyed it. Post a comment let me know what you think of some of the things that I pointed out and I put another video for you to watch after this one. There's also a link to Telegram if you want to chat to me on Telegram. Uh, both of those links will pop up now. Maybe you want to see an existing video on the channel. And I'm off on another adventure. Bye, everybody.